Here we define a class named bank account which will represent each user's bank account and handle all the operations related to deposits, withdrawals, and transaction history. This is the constructor method that runs automatically when a new account is created. It takes the user's name, their chosen PIN, and an optional starting balance which defaults to zero. We store the account holder's name so that it can be displayed later when needed. The user's four-digit PIN is saved here, which will be used later for authentication. The initial account balance is stored, allowing deposits and withdrawals to update it over time. An empty list is created to store all the deposit and withdrawal records as the user performs transactions. This method allows the user to add money into their account. It increases the balance and records the transaction in the history list. The amount entered by the user is added to the existing account balance. Every deposit is also noted in the transaction history, making it easy to track all previous actions. Finally, a message is printed showing how much was deposited and what the new balance is. The withdraw method handles taking money out of the account, but only if there's enough balance available. We first check whether the user has enough money to withdraw the requested amount. If the balance is sufficient, we subtract the withdrawal amount from the total balance. We also record this withdrawal in the transaction history list for future reference. A confirmation message is printed, showing how much was withdrawn and the updated balance. If the withdrawal amount is greater than the balance, this block will handle it. The user is informed that there isn't enough money to complete the withdrawal. This method simply displays the account holder's name and their current account balance. It prints both details together in a clean and readable format. This method displays all the transactions the user has performed, both deposits and withdrawals. It first prints a title to make the transaction list look more organized. If there are transactions recorded, they're displayed one by one, otherwise, a message says no transactions exist yet. Now we move to the main part of the program. The user is first asked to enter their name, which will be stored with the account. Next, the user sets up a four-digit PIN for account security. This PIN will be required to access the account later. Using the entered details, a new bank account object is created. At this moment, the user officially has a new account. Before continuing, the program verifies the user's identity by asking for the PIN again. If the entered PIN doesn't match, access is denied.
If the pin is wrong, this message warns the user and denies access. The program immediately stops if authentication fails, keeping the account secure. After a successful login, the program enters a continuous loop showing a menu of banking options until the user chooses to exit. Each time, the menu is displayed so the user can choose what they want to do next. The user enters a number corresponding to their desired action. If the user selects 1, it means they want to deposit money. The program then asks how much money to deposit and adds it to the account. If 2 is chosen, the user wants to withdraw money. The program asks for the withdrawal amount and tries to process it. Choosing 3 allows the user to check their current balance. It then prints the name and current balance of the account holder. If 4 is selected, the program will show all transaction records. This lists every deposit and withdrawal the user has made. If 5 is chosen, it means the user wants to exit the program. The program displays a friendly goodbye message. The loop stops, ending the program completely. If the user enters anything other than 1 to 5, this block catches it. A message appears telling the user they entered an invalid menu option.